So welcome back. This is another installment of the Cell Capacity Checker um, series. And this is part three. And in this part I'm going to actually put the components together and hopefully um, it'll work. Anyway, so to get started, uh, what have we got here? We've got the lithium ion cell. We've got the, um, I was going to say node MCU, but it's not, it's an Arduino Nano. Uh, we've got the resistor, we've got a TIP41C uh, transistor, and jumper wires. Uh, I've also got a multimeter as well. Anyway, let's start building this. So we want the anode of the cell there, then we might as well push the resistor in, in there. Then what do we need? So we're going from the anode through the resistor, which is the load. Then we need it to go to. Well, let's push the let's push the transistor in there. This is a TIP41C, of course, and the pinout is base collector emitter. Um, I think I'll wire in an ammeter as well, actually. So let's set this up for amps. Um, Let's just zoom out slightly. So, amps, that's set up there. So I'll go from after the load, and it needs to go to the collector. So let's put that in there like that. What do we need now? Right, the base. Oh, I'll push the nano in now as well, actually. So I'll push the nano in there. Now we need to go from the base to, let's say, D2, and this has got to be via a resistor, really. Um, I'm not 100% sure uh, what resistor I'm going to use. I mean, you can calculate it, um, but uh, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to guess. And this is around about 300 ohms, and that's quite low resistance, and that's not always a good thing. Uh, however, that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, you should probably use 1K or something. But the reason I'm going so low is I want to make sure that this transistor gets saturated. Anyway, that's going to go to D2. And then, so we're going from there, from there, through the ammeter. Right, we also need to push the cathode of the cell into the emitter. And we need to do something else. So I'll push the cathode into the emitter and I'll also ram in this jumper wire. And that needs to connect to ground on the node MCU. And um, as far as I know, that's everything. So let's just zoom in to show you. There's the node MCU, the transistor, and the resistor. There's the cell. The ammeter's reading nothing. Okay, so now I need to go and do some code. So let's start this sketch. First thing we need to do is define the pin. So define transistor as pin 2. Uh, let's copy that word. We need to set the pin mode. So pin mode transistor is output. Then down here we need to digital write, digital write, oh, digital write. Transistor high. Then we need a delay, so we'll have a delay of um, I don't know three and a half seconds maybe. Um, so is that looking good? That seems okay to me. And then copy that and paste it. And then we want to write low. And we want to write low for a second. That should do. Um, control T and Control U. Um, Okay, so when that's done, uh, I'll go back to the camera. Okay, so we're back to the camera, and um, you can see that the Nano is switching the circuit uh, open and closed. Um, so when it's closed circuit, it obviously drains, and when it's open circuit, it doesn't drain. And that's good, so far so good. Um, something I have noticed though, 
the drain is only 620 milliamps and that's a bit strange that's not what I expected uh, I sized the resistor to be more like 1 amp and it's 630 milliamps so just over half what I expected so what is going on here um, yeah that is a bit strange so I need to do a test I will just move this over put this other multimeter over here and let's see what the voltage of the cell is okay it's three and a half volts and what's the drop across the resistor 2.2 .2. There's 1.3 volt drop. Okay, okay, I know what's going on. There's a 1.3 volt drop across these wires. So there's a wire down here. There's a wire going all the way down here to my amp meter, my amp meter, and then back, and then down here, and then to the cathode of the cell. So what's going on is there's a drop here, and there's also more drop across the wires. And that 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 sounds reasonable because this is only 3.3 ohms um, and the way it works is that um, the amount of current is determined by the total amount of resistance in the whole circuit um, that comes into the equation when you when you use an ohms law so the voltage divided by the total resistance that tells you what the amount of current is and um, and that, that makes sense that's fine so um, yeah just to make sure though, um, we'll just do another calculation. So whatever the drop is across here, let's see what it is, 2.2 volts. So let's reverse this calculation here. I'll just get my calculator, 2.2 volts um, divided by this amount of amps here, divided by 0 0.67 it should be 3.3 yes perfect 2.28 or 3.3 that, that's that's within range that's good so we're still absolutely fine um, I made a bit of a miss um, a miscalculation i would forgotten that there would be um, resistance in the wires but we're still good um, everything's still fine so what we'll have to do is we'll have to measure the voltage drop across here which I was going to do that anyway um, and we'll read that into the Arduino and then um, we'll go from there OK, so, so far so good. Now, um, we need to do some checks and make sure this thing is, is working uh, reasonably well and reasonably safely. So, what I'm thinking is that I want to measure how much current is flowing through this base resistor here. So, I set my other multi multimeter to amps and then let's set it to... 200 milliamps. Um, put this back in in the view. Amps. So what I want to do is I want to measure. In fact, I'll just move this one out of the way for now. I want to measure from the base pin. Sorry, the Arduino D2 to the base pin after the resistor. And how many? milliamps is that taking less than 20 milliamps no microamps that can't be right okay 0 0.01 milliamps that's absolutely fine um, so we're good there um, just out of curiosity though I wonder what would happen if we exchanged it for a 1k resistor that's Put a 1k in. We'll see how many amps it draws now. Nothing. And let me just check the amount of amps to make sure it's fully saturating. So at the moment, with this 1k, uh, it allows three, uh, sorry, 540 milliamps to pass. And let me just replace this again. Yeah, now it's 670. So yeah, I, I am going to stick with the 300 ohm resistor. But anyway, uh, the draw is 0 0.01 milliamps, which is absolutely fine. So I'll take that back off. 
and reconnect it there. Okay, and everything's good so far. Let's move on. Now, um, I'm considering changing this resistor actually, because here we're draining 300, uh, sorry, 600 and something, 670 milliamps. I don't know if I should drain a bit more than that really, because later on when this gets fully drained or near fully drained, that's going to reduce. So I'm considering changing the resistor, but before I do, let's just do some interesting mathematics first. So the first thing I will do is, well I'll move that out of the way to start with. I'm going to measure the voltage of the cell again. I'm going to assume it's about 3.5 somewhere. Yeah, 3.48, I'm going to say 3.5, so it's 3.5 volts. And the 3.5 volts is dropping across this whole circuit. Um, and when the circuit is closed, it's causing an amperage to flow through of 660 milliamps. So if I just get my calculator, 3.5 um, uh, volts, sorry, divided by 0 0.66, which is the amount of amps flowing through, we can get the total amount of resistance in all of these wires. So if I just do that sum, the total resistance, according to my calculator, is 5.3 ohms. So there's 5.3 ohms of resistance through this whole circuit here. Um, and that's interesting. So if we take away the 3.3, so take away 3.3, which we know is that one, 2 ohms, that leaves 2 ohms. So the resistance of these wires, this wire here, and all the way down here, through the ammeter, through here and back here, the resistance of that is 2 ohms. Interesting stuff. So with all that in mind, um, I'm thinking that I might want to change the resistor for this one. This is a 1 ohm resistor. Um, Although I have 1.2 written on the back, so I mean, yeah, it's got 1 ohm J, so I think that's 5-10% or something like that. Anyway, let's do the calculations for this resistor in place of this one, and let's see what happens. So if we know that this wire and all these other wires down here equate to 2 ohms, because obviously we, we know that because we've just worked it all out. So if that's 2 ohms, if we were to take that out and put this in place, the whole circuit would then be 3 ohms, so the, the complete resistance through the whole path would be 3 ohms. So if we just check the voltage again of the cell, the voltage is 3.5. Okay, so I'll get my calculator up again, 3.5 volts divided by, uh, what did I say, 3 ohms, divided by 3 ohms, that's 1.16 amps. 1.16 amps, and actually, what if it is 1.2? Um, let's do that again. So, 3.5 divided by 3.2 um, ohms. What's that? That's 1.09 amps. So, 1.1 amps basically. Right, now let's do it and see what happens. So, I'm expecting that the amperage will be 1.1 amps, and that would be more suitable really. So connect this to there, I connect this to here, and what do we get? 1.02, so yeah, so I'm 70 milliamps out, is that right? Oh, one, uh, one amp now, so yeah, 90 milliamps out, well, okay, that can happen. So, um, but yeah, the calculation worked. So. I think I'm going to keep this resistor now instead of that one. So there you go, that's the first change to the project. This resistor is going um, simply because um, I'd failed to take into consideration that there's resistance also in the wires. Um, so yeah, goodbye. Okay, now this one here um, is better in a way anyway because this can dissipate 100 watts. Not that I ever want to go up to that. Um, but you know, if you overrate the resistor, you can't really go wrong.